in with, with this, with this um, sermon series is all about, is taking us back to our youth group. So remember some of the first times we might have ever heard stories like this, uh, or to uh, uh, remember the first time we went to church or anything like that. So I'm, I'm interested to understand, uh, or at least interested to hear some stories about, um, I'm looking around this church, there's only a handful of people who have worshipped here their entire life. Um, so what are, what are some of your first impressions of the first church you the world walked into? It was big. <laughs> what about anybody else? It smelled good. It smelled good. It was Catholic. <laughs> Did it have bells as well? You gotta have, if you got the smells, you got to have bells. I'm sure, yeah. Back in the day. What about some of the people you might have run into? What did they, how did they act? They were very formal. They were dressed in very formal Too, before. 
before I became a, a minister here at Grace Church, I was a, a manager of a restaurant, I was a bartender. I, I, I worked uh, frequently with people um, in patio settings. So I know how folks can become uncomfortable when someone comes up and panhandles for money. Um, and the response of the, of the management staff to step up and ask these people to politely move along. So I empathize for a half second with the, with the gentleman who was asking this person to move along. Today's scripture talks about uh, a person who's out on the margins of society. Um, for a lot of folks at this time, they believed that if you were blind, even if you were blind from birth, uh, you had either sinned or your parents had sinned. So this was a, this was a statement from God to you that you, uh, you've done something wrong. This has been brought again, brought up come to you. And so what uh, a lot of the religious scholars at that time would do is say that this person was unclean. They were sinful. They didn't need to be part of the, uh, the proper structure. So a lot of people that Jesus is healing are out on the margins of society. We see them on the, uh, outside the gates of the temple, outside the gates of the city, out on the side of the road. Um, what we see here is that there's a blind man who's living in a village that's not his own. What happens is he is led over by a friend to Jesus, who had been walking by that point. Now, Jesus had already started to build his fame at this point. He'd been preaching, he'd been teaching, he'd been healing. So this person, this blind man, thought that, you know what? I have a chance here to be healed. If I could only just touch Jesus, or if only Jesus could touch me, I could certainly be healed. So one of his friends led him out. And this is where the story did. Story of Jesus spitting his fingers, rubbing his, rubbing his hands together, and putting his, putting his hands on the, the blind person's eyes. After he, he gets, after he takes his hands off his eyes, he starts to look around a little bit, and he can see something. He really can't see everything, but he can see something. With the way he, he explains it, see, I can see shadows that look like trees walking by. And out of nowhere, Jesus goes up to him again, touches him. We don't know how he touches him. We don't know if he gave him the Benny Hinn and slapped him in the face and he was healed. For those of you who don't know who Benny, Benny Hinn is, please, by all means, go on YouTube after church. <laughs> YouTube Benny Hinn, and uh, he's an interesting cat, I'll tell you what. Um, but he heals him. We don't know if he slapped him on his forehead. We don't know if he hurt him. We don't know if he just gently touched him. But all of a sudden, he was healed. He got up. And Jesus told him to go back home. Almost to tell the story of what had just happened to his friends and his family to show that Jesus has the power to forgive these sins that they, that they may or may not believe. You know, it's an interesting story because this is the only story where we hear Jesus having to heal somebody twice in order to get them fully healed. Usually when we hear a story about Jesus, it's, all, it's almost instantaneous either someone grabbing his cloak, or him just uh, blessing them from far away, or someone coming up to him and him just laying hands on them, they're automatically healed. This is something different. It's very interesting that the, the writer of Mark decided to, to tell this story in, in such a way. One could think that this person needed to be healed twice to show the true power of Jesus. Because if you're just going to take it and understand that it's only going to happen, it'll happen once and it'll be a day okay, it might lose some of its power. So for Jesus to step up and do it twice, to completely heal that person, is to show the people that there is some real true power. It could also be because this person wasn't content with how they were being healed. I mean, going from seeing absolute darkness to seeing shadows, is a much more powerful way of living. You can actually, actually kind of make people out. But it's almost like he wasn't really ready to re recognize that he was truly blessed. So he asked Jesus to, to bless him. And he could finally see it. It's that double take in life, you know? So when you think you have something, then you look back again, and then you recognize, no, there's something greater already there. When I say I empathized with that manager at that cafe, I really did, because I've been in those difficult situations before. And I recognize that businesses are there to make people happy. They're there to make people happy, right? If you're going to go 
about to eat. You want a good meal. You want a good. You want to be entertained throughout that time. If you go out to a concert, you want the music to be good. If you go to a movie, if you're going to spend twelve bucks on a movie, you better hope that that movie is worth that twelve dollars. You want to be happy at the end. You want to think that you spent the money to get to that point. And that's what he's really there to do, to entertain us. To make us feel happy for a, a, a small point, portion of time, whether it's an hour, whether it's half an hour, whether it's um, an afternoon. We're seeking that happiness in life. See, for this blind person, I don't think he would have been truly happy until he recognized that he was blessed by God. What Jesus was doing here was actually blessing the blind person. He wasn't there to make him happy. He was there to bless him, to know that he, to let him know that he is blessed, to let him know that God loves him no matter what. To say that sin didn't cause this, life caused. So as I was walking back around the circle, back around the square there, back home, with Elise, it hit me, like that second time that Jesus healed. Because we need that. We don't always get it the first time. What would it look like if the manager of that restaurant, if the waiter of that restaurant, decided to invite that person in? rather than ask them to leave. What would it look like to have them sit down in their cafe and enjoy a cup of coffee? What would that look like? What would the people around them think? What would that do to business? See, here at the church, we're not about making people happy. Happy is too mighty. We're here to bless you. We're here to share stories that let everyone know that you are truly blessed, because that is infinite. That's not something you just take and throw away after the movie's done. That's not something you take and throw away after the meal's over. That's not something you take away after something bad happens in life. There's nothing I enjoy, I enjoy more than holding my daughter right now and seeing and just it just it just brings me absolute happiness to hold her until she cries. <laughs> but the blessings that come along with that are eternal. Blessings that I know that I will uh, be there for her throughout her entire life to bring her joy, to bring her happiness is what's amazing. See, we're not in the happiness business because it's too minute. We shouldn't be in the happiness business because happiness is too minute. We are in the, the blessed business because God has blessed us with grace. You see, that's what we need to share with those people in the margins that we feel uncomfortable around right from time to time. It's not making them... It's not making us instantaneously happily happy by giving them money or, or helping them out. It's, it's showing them that they are blessed by caring about them, by loving them, by showing them a new positive and, and an interactive way to show God's love to one another. And I recognize that just like conversations of faith, that can make some of us uncomfortable. But you see, God isn't here to make us comfortable. God is here to make us be happy. God is here to remind us that we are a blessed people. And to share those blessings with as many people as we possibly can. After Jesus heals this blind person, we don't hear anything about him. We don't know if he goes back to his home. We don't know if he goes back to his village. We don't know if his sight goes away after a long time. We don't do that because that's not what we're called to do. We're called to share the blessing in whatever ways we possibly can and do it without question, without asking again. That's what God's calling us to do, is to enjoy the happiness
happiness within life, but to spread the blessings, to be blessed. <laughs> you know, we're going to share this with